Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, FAA and EASA certify the Pilatus PC-24. Eric Lindbergh announces next generation aircraft. And Canada Bells on Super Hornet deal with Boeing. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson, it's December 11th, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Pilatus has obtained type certificates from the FAA and EASA for the first ever Swiss business jet. Certification of the super versatile jet prepares the ground for initial customer deliveries, which will see the PC-24 business jet take off from central Switzerland for its entry on the global market. The PC-24 development project was officially announced in 2013. But work on the super versatile jet has in fact been in progress for the past 11 and a half years. The first PC-24 prototype completed its maiden flight in May 2015. All three prototypes using the certification program have flown a total of 2,205 hours worldwide so far. Some flight tests were conducted in extreme environments, in icing conditions and very hot temperatures, at altitudes and speeds not usually encountered in everyday operations. Other tests have included bird impacts, structural stress tests, noise tests, and general function. Pilatus currently has eight PC-24s on the assembly line and stands, with 23 deliveries to customers around the world planned throughout 2018. In the U.S., Pilatus has invested in a new completions and support center. The first PC-24 will be handed over to the American fractional aircraft ownership business, Plain Sense, and stands later this month. After the break, GE Aviation and Praxair open jet engine coatings facility. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concorde's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concorde, the heart of your aircraft. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude and slip with integral backup battery safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, Airborne Unmanned, the AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. GE Aviation and Praxair Incorporated have opened a new facility for their PG Technologies business, which specializes in advanced coatings that enable jet engines to withstand higher temperatures and stresses. The 300,000 square foot facility is expected to employ at least 250 people to meet demand for GE's latest generation of jet engines, including the GE 9X and the CFM Leap a 50-50 joint venture between GE Aviation and Safran of France. A Valeris airliner en route to New York's JFK airport lined up to land on the wrong runway while a Delta Airlines jet was taking off earlier this week. But air traffic controllers caught the mistake and prevented a possible accident. The Valeris airliner was cleared to land on runway 13 left at JFK, but instead lined up on 13 right. In a recording of ATC Communications, controllers can be heard telling Brickyard 4231 to cancel takeoff plans. The Delta crew aborted the takeoff while controllers told the Valeris flight to go around. EASA has certified the new ATR 72600 full flight simulator based at ATR's Paris Training Center. The FFS, manufactured by True Simulation Plus Training, is conveniently located close to Charles de Gaulle Airport, which provides connections to any worldwide destination. 
With ATR operators expected to need around 1,000 new pilots per year, the new simulator will increase ATR's capacity to offer its customers increased pilot training solutions. The Regional Airline Association, which represents 22 North American regional airlines, is urging the FAA to approve additional safety-enhancing structured training pathways for Part 121 airline first officers. In comments addressed to the Department of Transportation on November 31st, RAA asked the FAA to modify 14 CFR 61.160 and use its existing authority to approve more pathways. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Eric Lindbergh, grandson of famed aviators Charles and Anne Morrow Lindbergh, has announced the formation of Vertigo Aero, an innovative new aerospace company with a mission to provide the upcoming multi-billion dollar urban transportation market with a safe, clean, and quiet hybrid electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft that can fly piloted or autonomously. The new company, with Lindbergh as president, taps electric aircraft industry pioneers Dr. Pat Anderson as chief technology officer and Eric Barch as chief operating officer, and has established headquarters at the Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Micaplex Incubator in Daytona, Florida. Vertigo Aero's breakthrough aircraft design utilizes advanced hybrid electric propulsion technology along with full-flight envelope safety systems for the safest, quietest, and most efficient aircraft possible. Our global economy has been stuck in a traffic jam for decades, but the technology is here to make the dream of flying car transportation a reality, said Eric Lindbergh. Use your smartphone to book your personal air taxi, and your trip to a Verde port across town will take minutes instead of hours. At Vertigo Aero, we are building the first safe and efficient short-range vertical takeoff and landing aircraft for the millions of people stuck in traffic in cities around the world. After these messages, Canada bails on Super Hornet deal with Boeing. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. Boeing's trade dispute with Bombardier has led the Canadian government to cancel its plans to buy 18 Super Hornet jet fighters. Boeing has accused Bombardier of dumping airliners on the U.S. market. It filed a complaint with the U.S. Commerce Department, which imposed a 300% tariff on Bombardier C-Series airliners. Boeing claimed that the Canadian government illegally subsidized the single-aisle jets and was offering the airplanes at absurdly low prices to U.S. carriers. As a result, the Liberal Government of Canada has now decided to scrap a deal it had with Boeing for 18 new Super Hornet fighters, opting instead to buy older model F-18s from Australia, which are the same variant currently flown by Canada. But with the relationship between Boeing and Bombardier crumbling and increased trade tension between the U.S., Canada, and Mexico over President Donald Trump's views of NAFTA, the deal may be off, sources said. Australia's Ministry of Defense confirmed that Canada has formally expressed interest in several of the F-A-18 Classic Hornets in September. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is currently on our winter schedule and is streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, alternating with the Airborne Unmanned on Tuesday and the AMA Drone Report each Thursday. Additional breaking news bulletins may be posted for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you tomorrow.